In this video, we're going to look at something called a phase diagram. If you look at this one, it's labeled with all the things that you need to know about it. But when you see it in the future on a test or an exam, it won't be labeled. And so you'll need to understand what everything is on the phase diagram without the labels. So if you look at the um, graph, it's a graph of pressure and temperature. So think about what happens when uh, substances are at low temperatures. Hopefully what you're seeing is that uh, at low temperatures things tend to be solid. So on the very left part of the graph at low temperatures, regardless of the pressure, typically things tend to be solids. Now as you increase the temperature at the same pressure, remember pressure doesn't typically change a lot if we're talking about atmospheric pressure. So if we're at a given pressure and we increase the temperature, you can see my arrow moving to the right, it's going to eventually reach the point where it begins to melt. And when it melts, it will become a liquid, okay? And as you go and continue to increase the temperature, it will vaporize and become a gas. And if we go in the reverse direction from high temperature to low temperature, gases will condense to liquids, liquids will freeze to solids. Now something that we haven't really talked a lot about are things that go from solids to gases. And we'll talk a little bit more about this. Uh, when solids go directly to gases at a given pressure, they go through a process called sublimation. And you may be familiar with dry ice. It does that, and I'll show you why in a couple of minutes. Uh, if a gas goes directly from a gas to a solid, we call that deposition. So you may have heard of um, like sublimation printing or sublimation t-shirts. Those are things that have a particular kind of uh, dye that's deposited on them with a sublimation process. And don't worry about these little blue things. They're just extra, uh, they're from the picture that I cut out. So I think they're little bubbles that aren't showing on the picture. Um, the triple point here, A, is where all three states exist together. So if we can get this particular substance at the pressure and the temperature of point A, you can have the solid, liquid, and gas all together in the same container. And then B is called the critical point, and that's the point where a gas can no longer be liquefied. That's called a supercritical fluid, and that's used for things like decaffeinating coffee, so I'm sure there are people who like that. So um, if you think about it, uh, you can see that starting at low temperature, you start with a solid, increase temperature, it melts to a liquid, increase temperature more, it vaporizes into a gas. So you can see what, uh, what that looks like. So let's look at a, a phase diagram for water. So you can see that our, the typical atmospheric pressure for us is about one atmosphere. Remember that that's standard pressure. And so you can see if you look, that the melting point where it crosses from the solid to the liquid when it crosses this line, this phase change line, that is at zero degrees Celsius, which is the freezing point of water. And if we continue to heat it, that vaporization point or boiling point of water is at 100 degrees, okay? Now, the triple point you can see is at 4.58 torr. It is extremely low. I cannot get to that low of a pressure using my uh, vacuum pump. But you can see, uh, if you lower the pressure, you can see what happens to the boiling point, okay? So let's look at some boiling water temperatures at uh, different elevations, because remember, as you go up in elevation, the pressure, the atmospheric pressure goes down. So if you're somewhere that is fairly close to like New York City, fairly close to what we consider typical atmospheric pressure, we say the boiling point is 100 degrees Celsius. But let's say you go visit your friends in Leadville, Colorado for the holidays, and you can see that the boiling point here is much lower. Um, if you wanted to boil an egg, you would need to boil it longer because you would only be boiling it at 89 degrees rather than 100 degrees. So if you like to boil your egg for uh, 12 minutes, you might need to boil it for a few more minutes to get the center, the yolk, the same consistency that you like. Um, if you travel to Mount Everest, you're going to boil water at 70 degrees C. So you can see as you go up in the elevation, the pressure goes down significantly. So that's just something to keep in mind. When you go to the mountains, your ears pop. That's because of that 
change in pressure. And if you've ever bought a box of brownies or a cake mix or something like that, you probably notice that they have high elevation baking directions and they change the directions a little bit because of the difference in the boiling point so that the cake mix or cookies or whatever it is, it'll usually tell you to cook for a little bit longer to make sure that you get all the moisture out of it so they won't be too soft. All right, let's look at a phase diagram for CO2. Um, so if you look at carbon dioxide, you can see at one atmosphere, typical room pressure, it goes from, remember the solid will be the portion on the left, the liquid will be the portion in the middle and the gas will be the portion on the right. You can see that at one atmosphere, so room pressure, carbon dioxide goes from a solid to a gas directly. So it's it goes through that sublimation process. And if you've ever seen carbon dioxide, dry ice, it's sublime. So you can see that gas coming off of that block of CO2. It just looks like a hunk of ice. But you find that transition between the solid and the gas. And so um, that is what causes that to sublime. It's just that that phase diagram shows you that that pressure uh, is, uh, falls on the point where you go from the solid directly to a gas, okay? If you have a paintball gun with a CO2 cartridge, the pressure in the CO2 cartridge has to be above 5.11 atmosphere to keep that CO2 as a gas, okay? Let's compare a couple of phase diagrams. Don't worry about the numbers, just think about the shapes. Okay, so look and see what you see appears to be different with these two, the shapes of them. Hopefully you notice that with the water phase diagram, this portion, the boundary between the solid and the liquid, has a negative slope. This boundary for dry ice, CO2, has a boundary between the solid and liquid that has a positive slope. This negative slope boundary is due to the, uh, due to the hydrogen bonding. So let's put up another slide for that. Um, that's, it's negative in water because liquid water is more dense than ice. Remember, it's unusual for the liquid to be more dense than the solid. That's from hydrogen bonding. That's not normal. So you could see a question like that about the phase diagram and why that happens. And for water, that's because of the hydrogen bonding. So that's the, the difference there. So again, be aware that when you see questions on this, typically they're not going to be labeled. It might look uh, like this but without any of this information it might have some pressures and temperatures and ask you things like the boiling point triple point critical point melting point those sorts of things so just be aware of that and we'll do some practices in class I'll see you then